Welcome to week five, planning projects. Please read chapter 10 in the Brazoo book and selected readings in the PMBOK. In the Canvas learning management system, we are in module five, where you'll find the usual overview, agenda, assignment, and lectures for this week. Assignments for this week include the readings, discussions, a quiz, and of course, your next course project deliverables. Do this week for your project is the action plan or schedule. For this class, or for your project I should say, you can create a project schedule or an action plan. Examples of the action plans are available in the Verzu textbook. Templates are available in the file section of Canvas under templates and forms. Last week the focus was on the what, the scope of the project, where we did a work breakdown stru structure of the deliverables, subdeliverables, and work packages. We continue the planning process this week and focus on building the project schedule. The schedule is based off of the lowest level of the WBS. As you see in the diagram here, we're going to talk about the when, the timeline. A project schedule indicates what needs to be done, which resources will be utilized, and when the project is due. It is a timetable that outlines the start dates and end dates and milestones that must be met for the project to be completed on time. The project schedule is often used in conjunction with the work breakdown structure to distribute work amongst the team members. The project schedule should be updated regularly to gain a better understanding of the project status. Verzu has prepared a planning steps that you can use for your projects. Pre-planning activities included on page 189 are the project definition that we did in week two with the business case, the stakeholder register, and the assumption log. In week three, we worked on the risk management plan, including the risk register and the RAID log. The planning steps on page 190 include number one, the work breakdown structure, which we just completed in week four. So if your WBS is task oriented, you can move to the next step. If not, if your WBS is only deliverable oriented, you'll need to define the activities and tasks before you can move on to step number two. Step number two is the identification of the task activities and relationships. Three is estimating the work packages, which we'll do a deeper dive into next week. Step four is calculating or building the initial schedule using the tool of your choice. And number five is assigning and leveling resources so that you, nobody works over 40 hours. Please see the planning checklist available in the files section of the Canvas learning management system in templates and forms. So let's take a deeper dive into each of these steps. Step two is the identification of the task relationships. As I said, if you've already created your detailed tasks, then you can move on. If not, you'll need to create your detailed task list. Once you have a task list, you sequence the task or activities in the order that they need to occur. We do this by creating relationships, predecessors and successors. We need to understand the relationship rules. First off, defining a task relationship only between work packages. You don't assign relationships between summary tasks or milestones. Another rule is task relationships should only reflect sequence constraints between work packages, not resource constraints. You can find an example of a simple network diagram on page 192 of the Rizu textbook. And the last bullet here, milestones. We want to call out significant events, anchor points in our project schedule, points in time that are important to our success. Milestones do not have duration, nor do they have work effort. Step three is estimating the work packages. First off, you need to understand the difference between work and duration. Work is the amount of time that it takes to complete a task. Duration is calendar time. For instance, it may only take four hours to pour a concrete pad, but it will take another four days for that pad to dry before you can build on it. So the work is four hours, but the duration is four days. Bottom-up estimates 
need to include not only the labor, but the equipment, materials, and other supplies. And when you're doing your bottom-up estimating, consider skill level and productivity. Experts are going to be able to complete a task much quicker than a novice. We'll talk more about estimating next week. Step four is calculating the initial schedule, or simply building the schedule. As we said several times in this class, project management is both art and science. Scheduling, just like the WBS process, is 90% art. It takes time to get used to how to do this process, and then once you do it, you'll continue to iterate your schedule over time in what we call rolling wave planning. For this class, we will not be covering the critical path process, so you don't have to study the forward pass, backwards pass, or float. However, that is required for the PMP exam and would be part of the PMP prep course. Gantt charts or time-scaled network diagrams are also optional for your course project. Step five is assign and level resources. You want to optimize the use of people and equipment. You want to use the fewest resources possible to keep your costs low. Project managers use a process called resource leveling. We need to start with an initial schedule and then we smooth out the peaks and valleys to again make sure that nobody's working more than 40 hours a week. We want to do a realistic schedule test. We call the sniff test. You can do this by doing schedule reviews with experts or your team and then you'll baseline the schedule with your project sponsor. Make sure resources know when they are needed and more importantly, when they will roll off the project. Same thing goes for your equipment and your supplies. Try to get them on site in advance if you can. In this chapter, there are several project schedule features that I wanted to point out. Network diagrams on page 192 help you understand relationships such as predecessors and successors. Gantt charts on page 210 are the visual depictions of schedule and time which are really good tools to use for leadership reviews. Task and activities, as diagrammed on page 214, are good to show your team and get them on board with the detailed schedule. Milestones, as defined on page 192, again, are those significant events that you need to include in your schedule. Summary tasks are shown on page 218 and show roll-ups of child tasks, showing that parent-child relationship. And then on 194 is the description or definition of the three primary relationships. Finish start, start start, and finish finish. In closing, please remember to participate on the discussion board at least four times, responding to me and your peers, and don't forget to include your takeaway item each week. Read the responses and keep the conversation going all week. Watch for announcements, and don't forget to complete your quiz and your course project deliverables by the end of the week. Remember that you can contact me anytime via email or text. Thank you and have a great week.